Hey y'all, Jonathan here with Soundstripe, and today we're gonna walk through the pre-production process of what it takes to make a cinematic music video. I'm really fortunate to have two of my friends and colleagues from Soundstripe today, Chris Haggerty and Renee Olson. Chris is an amazing DP and filmmaker. Renee is an amazing producer and art director. We've all got the opportunity to work together a number of times over the years. So we've got some shorthand and we've worked together a lot. We've worked this out. But no matter the production, you still need to start at the beginning, right? And at the beginning is usually, once you get the song and you talk to the artist, you know what you're looking to do, you've got to write a treatment. Exactly. Right? I can't get started on anything until I get the treatment from you. Right. So treatment, for those of you that might not understand or know what that is, is when you basically lay out the story, the themes, the tones, the approach. You might include mood boards, reference pictures. You might include casting uh, references. So it's basically the Bible for the project. It's the master document that everything else is based off of. Yeah. Okay guys, if you haven't already, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment. When I write the treatment and hand it off to you all, Renee, what's the first thing you're looking for? The first thing I'm usually looking for is what kind of talent we're gonna need, types of locations, art, and if there are any major uh, oversights that I might need to talk to Chris about as far as gear or um, crew goes. Oh. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah why do do it's supposed to be that and right before just... the snare comes in. I'm usually looking for budget and where I can spend it. <laughs> Before we even get to that point, for me, it's usually starting off with like, if there's a script involved or um, uh, even like a, a mood board, which would be included in the treatment. Um, and that's usually a document that has uh, anything from like color references to uh, frame references that I can then start building a visual story based off of. From there, it's usually building a shot list and then um, usually doing some like lighting overheads. Over the past couple days, we got to shoot a music video for a song called Like Water on a Glass Table by an artist named Glasswing in the Soundstripe Library. Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces. We had a lot of crew, a lot of talent, a lot of locations, uh, and not a lot of time to do it, which is pretty standard, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's part of getting used to production. So why don't we start with locations? Okay. Talk us through a little bit of your process. Yeah, so I read through the treatment and it was very clear that we needed a house we needed a tree that could be at that house or not, and we needed a warehouse location, yep. big open space. So um, we kind of reviewed, the easiest one was the warehouse. In Nashville, we have a lot of different warehouses we can kind of access. Um, we're at a really cool one called South by Sea today uh, that we've used before and we'll probably use again, but there wasn't a lot of crossover as far as the house goes yeah. or the tree. And then the house, as you'll see in the music video, had a very specific look which was called for in the treatment. We needed a ton of windows because we needed our characters to be able to meet up and see each other through the glass. So that was a little more narrowed down. And from there, we realized where this house was did not have the tree we needed, so we went to a local park, which had all the trees we could ever hope to <laughs> choose yeah. from, and we found a great one. So. Yeah, the the house in particular yeah. actually was very much a character in the story. Agreed. Uh, which was why it was so hyper-specific. Mm -hmm. And so definitely, uh, when you're looking at locations and you're considering budget, mm -hmm. You definitely have to take it all into account and say, what can we get away with here yeah. when we need something hyper-specific here? In this instance, the house that we landed on was a huge win for the production. Um, and so with that, we knew that, okay, if we're gonna put our investment here in our resources, then we have to keep into account our other two to make sure they all work together. Yeah, the house that you put as a reference in your mood board was the house I ended up yeah. finding, which never happened. That has never happened. <laughs> never happens before, it will never happen again, <laughs> but we're gonna go with it because it worked out. Landing locations really allowed you to do what you needed to do in terms of lighting and gear. 
once we found out uh, we had this location, the House of Windows, as we kind of referred to it in the treatment, um, I immediately made two decisions. One, we had to have a stripped down gear list, so we landed on a Steadicam op and Anamorphics. And two, with the minimal amount of time that we had to be in this location, we had to create lighting overheads. What this lighting overhead is, is a diagram of what the lights uh, are and what setup we're gonna have at this location. So that allows us to walk into set, have the crew set everything the way we need to, and we can do things much, much faster. So while you were working on gear and lighting, we had moved on to casting. Yes. So this particular treatment called for nine unique talent, um, eight of whom were all kind of an ensemble cast, and we had one talent that was off during it for a different sequence. Yep. We had to get a whole variety of people. Yeah. Um, I connected with a lot of different people, and another element to this casting is that we had choreography involved, which means people have to be comfortable moving and uh, able to do it well on camera. So that adds a whole nother element to casting. Absolutely. Normally we just need someone who looks a certain way, but we actually needed them to have a specific talent and be willing to share that talent with us. So it was a task. Yeah, it absolutely was, it was. but you did an incredible job. Thanks. There was also a pretty in-depth art element. There was. That you also undertook during yes. this process. I actually volunteered myself for this. You volunteered yourself. Maybe I shouldn't do that in the future. <laughs> but this was more stripped down. We used the environment around us, but it had two key elements, which were water and a glass table from the title of the song, like water on a glass table, a little bit on the nose, as Chris <laughs> was saying. But we had someone playing piano on the glass table, but we wanted to make that glass table shatter. And instead of breaking glass with 25 <laughs> people around, we decided to make fake shatter glass. And we made that with isomalt and it turned out really cool. Isomalt is a sugar that's derived from beets and it is totally safe to eat, but they use it a lot for if you make glass on a cake or something like that, so. It's like rock candy, right? I think rock candy <laughs> might be made out of that too, so <laughs> check it out if you're interested. It's a lot of fun. Don't ask why I did that. <laughs> Regardless of how much work you put in on the front end, something's always gonna change, right? That's why it's so important to know where you're going. At Soundtrap, we say, date the model, marry the mission. It's one of our core values. And it's a great example of know where you're trying to go, know the ultimate goal, make sure everyone's on the same page. Have your plan on how to get there, but also know that you might have to adapt or shift, and that's okay, because as long as you all know where you're headed, how you get there can, can waver, right? But you surround yourself with good people, you put the work in, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are great. <laughs> put the work in, surround yourself with good people, and you're gonna end up with something that's worth sharing. We wanna hear from you all. Let us know in the comments what you think is some of the most important parts of pre-production, whether we covered it or not and we're gonna give a free year of soundtrack away. Thanks so much, see you next time.